We all know that this seminar, this seminar is something that is unique. It is not a church service, but it will enable you to function in a church service. Praise the Lord. It is not a church service, but it will enable you to function in the church service, or in any service, or in any ministry, praise the Lord. Amen. Character development is essential in the body of Christ. By the grace of God, I have met many, many ministers and have served under different ministries. And then you observe that Character is lacking even amongst big ministers. Make no mistake, if you were not trained at the age of 20, you will not become trained at the age of 40 by reason of age. It doesn't work like that. When you are not trained, you remain untrained. Amen. A fool at the age of 20 will still be a fool at the age of 40 and will remain a fool at the age of 60. Some of you, if you recall, there are many old men in the village when they talk, they say, keep quiet. True or false? Are they not old? And that is to prove that the wisdom is not with the aged. And when we talk about training, it is to make you more profitable in the body of Christ. The, the problem that is going on in church presently is not because of lack of anointing. It is because of lack of training. Praise the Lord. So when you participate in this seminar, when you connect online to this seminar, when you attend in person to this seminar, you didn't attend to go back home. You attend to make a difference. Praise the Lord. Your attendance is to make a difference either in the local church or in your community or in your family, but the emphasis is to equip you to make a difference. Make no mistake about it. Some of the teachings we will receive here, they are unique. I said to you that when Paul went to Ephesus, there was a lot of trouble. There was a lot of riot. And the Bible said that Paul couldn't continue to minister in the synagogue. He couldn't continue to minister in the synagogue. What did he do? The Bible said he separated the disciples. He separated the disciples. Now, who is a disciple? The disciple is the one that follows you. So, they were hardened, the Bible told, said to us. They were hardened. They were not receiving. Not only that, they were poisoning the mind of the people. And then, and then, Paul said, he withdrew those that agreed with him. Those are risen with him. And he didn't begin to train them in church. He took them to a school. So he had Bible school for them. Praise the Lord. Two years was a long time to have Bible school. <laughs> Amen. The Bible says he trained them for two years. Two years. So even if you attend this training till the end of December, it's not enough. If you attend this training for the next six months, it's not enough. And so we are going to have continuous process of training on this Character Development Institute by the grace of God until the school is finally built and completed. Yeah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. By the grace of God, some of you will be teachers in the school. 
and you will recall your learning days. You will recall your learning days. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Very often they will ask you who taught you. Who taught you? They don't ask who preached to you. When David brought down Goliath, Saul said, whose son is this? Is it not true? Whose son is this? He asked Abner, whose son is this? But that's funny because it was Saul that sent for David to Jesse. He said, let your son come. But he understood that he understood that Jesse was the father of David. But the exploit of military, Jesse could not be his father. Are you hearing me? Biologically speaking, Saul knew the father of David. But militarily speaking, he didn't connect it. He said, Abner, find out where this guy is coming from. Find out who is the father of this guy. He was talking about something greater than biological birth. Praise the Lord. And that is what training can do in your life. Training can change your fatherhood. Amen? Training can do what? Change your fatherhood. And God said, because you have rejected knowledge, I've also rejected you from being priests unto me. And I said to you, Hosea 4, 6 is very important. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Anybody that is ignorant is useless in the body of Christ. Actually, you are a problem, you are a liability. Remember the mighty men of David that we looked at? When they came with, to David, they came armed with something, isn't it? All of them, when we studied the mighty men of David, they came with something, isn't it? Now, every believer, if you look at the book of Ephesians chapter 4, if you look at the book of Ephesians chapter 4, it is very clear. When you are saved and you are not equipped, your salvation is not complete. It doesn't matter how much money you give in the church. I want us to open to Ephesians chapter 4. Praise the Lord. Remember also, it was in Ephesus that Paul got the 12 disciples that he trained for two years, isn't it? So when Paul is writing to the Ephesians, he had revelation about that place. He had understanding. Now, if you understand that you are a liability without training in the body of Christ, you will go for training. You will desire to be trained. Amen. Amen. Paul was writing to Titus, and I believe we'll get that. He said to Titus, he said, mark those that are divisive in the church. That was what Paul said to them. He says, mark those that are divisive in the church. He said, warn them once, warn them twice. If they do not change, Paul said, have nothing to do with them. That's what Paul says. And if you want to be trained and really understand what it means to be trained, go and read the book of Timothy and the book of Titus and see the instructions that Paul gave to his sons in ministry. There is a book that I made all the leaders in the church in Munich to read, all the leaders in search of Timothy. And everybody in this class, everybody in this class must read that book in search of Timothy. This training will eventually be a foundation for anybody to be a leader in God's family church anywhere in the world, whether in Germany, whether in Nigeria. If you are going to be a leader in God's family church, you must go through the process of this training. Whether you do it online, or whether you do it by physical attendance, but anybody that we lead will eventually go through this class completely. And there are two books I would recommend in search of Timothy. 
sorry, three books, In Search of Timothy. That is Pastor Tony Cook. Praise the Lord. In Search of Timothy. Everybody in this class must read that book. Then there's another book I would recommend that you read, You and Your Pastor, by Pastor Sunday Adeleja. Are you hearing me? So that is a test book for this class. And then the last book is, is Walking in Love, Love the Way to Victory, by Pastor Hagen, Kenneth E. Hagen. Many people are in bondage. It is not because that they themselves went for idol worship. It's because they were born on the altar and the foundation of idol worship and they never dealt with it. They got born again. Listen, they got born again. And when they got born again, they didn't bother to understand the foundation on which they were born. I said something on Sunday and I will say it again today. Many of you, you are born again. You are a new creation, isn't it? Isn't it? Some of you, in the night, you've been having the challenge. Somebody will come and sleep with you, forcefully violating you. And when you wake up, you know that you've been violated. True or false? Are you not a new creation? You are a new creation. Why is it happening? You have prayed in tongue before you slept, and it happened. You did everything you know. You've gone for deliverance. I am not against deliverance. Listen, I am not against deliverance. I, I cast out demons when they show up in the surface. You cast them out when the needs appear. I don't believe in dedicating a service for deliverance. But when there is a need for it, you cast out the devil. Praise the Lord. When Jesus was ministering the word, when the devil shows up, he cast out the devil. He never organized deliverance service. That is to give too much acknowledgement to the devil. But let me tell you with the problem of going for deliverance. When you go for deliverance and you are delivered, the demons are cast out quite all right. In 24 hours, they can come back into your life. You know why? You know why? <laughs> you see, you are the owner of your body. You are the owner of your soul. Somebody can make an intrusion by the anointing and cast out devil. No problem. Somebody can do it. But remember, there is no neutrality in the realm of the spirit. There is no emptiness, meaning that either you are possessed by the spirit of God or you are possessed by demons. You have to be one. Now, when somebody delivers you from demonic oppression, immediately, Immediately, what do you do? You need to begin to feed your spirit with the word of God. You need to feed yourself with the word of God. There is nothing that keeps the devil away but the word of God. Are you hearing me? You, you know, a lot of people, they've gone to a deliverance so many times. They manifest the same thing all over and over again. And people keep saying, why are they manifesting the same thing? Same thing? As long as you do not feed your spirit, as long as you do not charge your spirit, as long as you do not reposition yourself spiritually, the demons will keep on coming back. Shout hallelujah. And so you have your textbooks for this class, which you must read through them. I was trying to tell you that if you are not trained, you will be a liability and you continue to be a liability in the church. You will be divisive in the church. You will be distracting in the church and you will be unstable in the church. And I'm not just telling you from what I think. I am telling you from what, from what is in the Bible. I want to also open to Ephesians chapter 4. And we are reading from verse 11. Praise the Lord. 
My prayer is that the Lord will help each and every one of us. Not only to attend, but to receive. But to be transformed. Because at the end of the day, this will change your life. There are things that I have learned over the years that I wish I was taught earlier because I know where I would have been in ministry. One of the greatest things that has helped me as a Christian, not as a pastor, is that we did a business called Christian books, whereby we were supplying Christian books to pastors, to churches. We were building up libraries. And I am grateful that God used it to open many doors in ministry for me. I remember one time, to just to show you the level where our work was registered. I remember one time that Papa, when I say Papa, you know I'm talking about Bishop Oyedepo. When I said that, you know I'm talking about Bishop Abioye. You get it? Because these are our fathers in the faith in this ministry. Papa sent three or four pastors at a time. And he said to them, go to what I live. Go to my son's library. Go to his library. He told them, open the library. Any book there that I don't have, bring it. Are you hearing me? You remember that experience? Pastor Mrs. Seseka and two other pastors. They, I was in my office. They just said that some pastors from Winners are here. I said, what have I done? I said, I welcome, I welcome them. As we were sitting there. I said, what do we order? They said, no, 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 no. They said, brother, for hold on with what you want to bring for us. Papa has sent to us. I said, what did I do? He said, no, you didn't do anything. They looked in my office and I had a big shelf with live books there. And they said they have instruction to search through my library. And that any book that Papa does not have, they, they are commanded to bring it. Amen. Listen, I was privileged that Papa sent such information to me. It can only happen to a son. Amen. And so <laughs> I said, but you can drink something. They said, no, 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 no. They will drink something after. The past was bent on the, the, the carpet. They were going through all the books. Even the one we had in stock, they were checking. As they were checking, they were collecting. As well, they said they should be writing. They were writing. Amen? They were writing. They were writing. And they collected everything. They said, okay, I can bring their drink. At that time, I was not willing to offer the drink. Because they've just collected all my books. But nevertheless, I have to offer it. Praise the Lord. And they took all the books to Papa. He checked, 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 checked. He said they should just keep it. He asked them, did I give them invoice? They said no. So when I went to church, <laughs> I saw Papa. <laughs> he said, he said, by the way, what a life. How much is those books that uh, you sent to me? I said, Daddy, no price, sir. <laughs> no price. I saw it that. He said, that's good. God bless you. Praise the Lord. It was that ministry of books that transformed my life. I had access to books that even many pastors never had access to. Readers are leaders. Readers are leaders. I remember a pastor I took a book to one time. He heard the book. He just, as whether he sat down, he read through the book, he read through the book, he said, as whether he read, you know, you know. And then he took all the books. He told me to come the following week to collect money. I went there because we were friends. He said, he said, Pastor Alpha. No, then he said, Brother Alpha, I want to thank you for these books. He told me that he read one particular book that week. He said what he had taught in his church was in error. He said, I have to go back and correct it. He said, thank you for that book. Praise the Lord. Studying will correct your errors. Reading will correct your errors. You cannot be trained without reading. You cannot. When I was made an associate pastor in 1990, can you remember when Dr. Me was started the Covenant? Giant ministry, 
maybe in the late 90s, I was an associate pastor. My, fir my first assignment was to open prayer. And I told you, but I shared it in the book there. To open prayer. When I was asked to open prayer, Saturdays, I will prepare as if I'm the one going to preach. I will pour through. I bought so many books on prayers. I bought so many books on prayers. I began to equip myself. The gift of the, of the Spirit is given for the profiting of all. The gift of the Spirit is given for the profiting of all. If whatever you have does not profit all, check again who gave it to you. And while I was just handling opening prayer, even though I was quite afraid, because that was my first assignment, true to the pulpit. And then also, I was also in charge of the choir, like I've shared with you. And then I also was in charge of pastor's welfare and all that, driving him around and all that. And so I was introducing to a lot of things at one time in the local church. And that is how it is when you are gifted. When you are talented, you are not stuck with one thing. But you are, I remember when our resident pastor in Germany, she's the one connected to this meeting. When I put her in, in the charge of the bookshop, I had put two other people there. They were not able to perform. They had excuses why they couldn't make it. And so I said, go there. The same place. I gave her a target. She was so dedicated. She was so committed. It came up to a point where she was sleeping in the church in Munich. There was no room. There was no room, but she would sleep in church. You see, if you don't give ministry, you are all. You will never get all out of it. And the Bible said, God is not mocked. Many of you are doing service like this, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. You have no hunger. You have no test. You have no zeal. And God is looking at your heart intent. And God says, who are you deceiving? You can play a game around your pastor and all that. The first month I put PDA in the bookshop, the first month she exceeded her target. The first month, the second month, she exceeded her target. The third month, she also did the same thing. Exceeded her target. And I took notice of her. While she was exceeding her target, I didn't know that she was also penniless in her pocket. I didn't know she was broke. And she didn't know how to communicate to me. She never told me she was broke. Because then she was not working. Praise the Lord. She was not working. It was the day I phoned her. I called her from the house. I said, please, go to the city, buy a phone card and give to me because I want to make some international call. She said, daddy, I don't have five euro. I said, what? She said, she doesn't have five euro. I was so touched. And I said to my secretary, hey, what happened? She doesn't have five euro. I said, change that immediately. Make sure she gets certain money, certain money. Praise the Lord. But people were mocking her while she slept in the church. People said she was lazy. People called her name. But she was being proven for what is to come. Amen. Amen. And the Bible said we should prove all things. When you raise leaders and appoint leaders without proving them, you are heading for trouble. And we have seen this trouble. We have seen it. We have seen it in many places. Praise the Lord. And so when I bought a business in Regensburg, when I bought a business in Regensburg, there was nobody else to put there except the one that has proven herself to be faithful. And I just carried her and I put her poom in that business. And since that day, 13 years ago, she is still in charge of that business. And the business has not only grown, she has now employed people. And they are working under her. Praise the Lord. When some of you see her, you don't know her testimony. Sometimes we pray wrongly. Like I said to you, we pray so long because we live so wrong. Do you think for once 
that God is so wicked that for us to get the simplest thing from him, we have to pray and fast and we pray long and all that. Some of us here are parents. How many times does our children ask us to pay their school fees? No. Sometimes they don't even ask for the school fees. You know the time to pay it, isn't it? You pay without them asking, isn't it? You ask them when they are hungry. And, I mean, how many of you have your son or your daughter come to you and say, Daddy, when am I, paying, when am I getting money to pay my house rent? They ask you. No. But, you see, the person of God has been miscommunicated to us in many ways in the New Testament. And that is why our faith in God is so weak and so low. And so we walk in an attitude and manner of ignorance about who God is. And so when we pray, we pray with ignorance. When we fast, we fast in ignorance. And the reason is because we lack training. We lack training. And so I believe that this period that we are being trained, you need to maximize it. And I said to you, one month is not enough, two months is not enough, three months is not enough. We just say, as long as it takes, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I told you to open to Ephesians chapter 4. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 4. <clears throat> 